Revocation Radio, that is the latest from Red. It's called AI on your Monday edition of the Morning Overload. Hello to you. John Walden hanging out as uh, we've been having an awesome, awesome conversation uh, off the air, just getting ready for this hour as a pretty incredible and powerful testimony. And I've been keeping up with this uh, kind of behind the scenes, just watching what's going on. A uh, guy I grew up with playing baseball with, uh, Trey Carter hanging out and uh, uh Eric ended up marrying a, a girl from the same high school that we went to as well. So, so Eric is a brother. It's extended family. How about that? Uh, friend of friends, and uh, you keep up with folks. And I don't really, I'm really bad about posting on social media as much as I should, especially doing what I do. I post more for the radio station than I do on a personal level, but I just let my wife tag me and everything. It's like, oh, we did something. So you can keep <laughs> up with my life by that because I just forget because I'd much rather talk than type on the phone I, I forget about it but anyway so we got eric pearson hanging out we got trey carter hanging out they also have a band called the dirt road liars if you want to look that up uh, by the way life on pause is the uh, the full album out of calhoun county alabama doing some stuff and it's a great flavor incredible flair and uh like i said i keep up with stuff you just don't know because i don't we comment a lot for sure. i don't comment a lot i just you know i like <laughs> to see what people are doing and and let you do your thing but um eric's in this morning uh, in particular uh for um an awakening situation let's put it that way and uh, awake again if we if i can get it previewed quick enough we might be able to uh, to spin it this morning while you guys are in here um but eric you know you're, you're 38 years old and um completely unexpected and life comes at you fast doesn't it yes it's moving yes, it does. And, and eric can you kind of share you know a little bit of, of, about your life leading up to this and and you know what what god's done for you and obviously you know I, i've seen through the years sharing your faith and, and things of that nature but your faith is so much more real to you now after this situation than it's ever been before. Oh, yeah. But can you kind of give us a little bit of your story and, and the lead up to uh, what happened to you? So the best way that I can put it is before, um, before the situation, before I get into what happened, um, I basically got to the point I knew God. I've always known God. I've known, always known Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But uh, I was sliding down a big hill, mm. you know, just basically living the way I wanted to, doing what I wanted to, eating what I wanted to, just no conscious of myself and taking care of myself, burning the candle at both ends. Right. And, um, you know, I was probably doing some things. Well, I was doing some things that I shouldn't have been, and social media get us in trouble. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right. social media, if you allow it, social media will, Absolutely. will get us in trouble. So, you know, I was dedicating all my time to work and dedicating all my time to the band and kind of family was the side adventure mm. and uh so we uh you know like i said i was just i had a bad diet i was smoking a pack a day and then it comes around to may 10th you know we were waiting on our album to you know come the physical cds to come but it was already on all the digital media outlets but we were waiting on the physical album to come. And um, I go over to the school, pick up my son, I start having chest pains. Just feels like somebody's stabbing me. Worst pain I've ever been in my life. And I told my son, I said, Elijah, I said, Daddy may have to go to the doctor. Because at, at that time, I had heartburn real bad. I mm -hmm. thought it was just heartburn and chest pains and heartburn and chest pains. But by the time I got back to my house, it was like five minutes to my house from the school. By the time I got back to the house, I just walked in. You know, Eliza starts playing, and, and Trey's sitting on the couch, and we're just all excited. We actually had a show that weekend for Relay for Life in Tennessee. Oh, wow. And um, anyway, so I just I, I go to the bathroom, and he hollers out. He's like, don't lock that door. I don't want to kick it down. I don't want your wife mad at me for kicking the door down. Because he, <laughs> right. he knew something was wrong. Yeah, yeah. It, I knew when he walked in there was something wrong for sure. And um, I came back out, and I looked at Elijah, and I was like, hey, will you be good for Trey? And uh, he just looks up. You know, it's always the cutest thing. You know, seven, you know, six. He's six at the time. He's turned seven since. But, you know, six-year-old look up. Yeah, Daddy. You know, right. just kind of nonchalantly. It's almost sarcastic. Like, I'm gonna play. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah you just, just know he's play. got something in mind. For yeah, you. exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> will you will you turn on my Xbox? Come on, Dad. Where's my cell phone? You know. Oh yeah. So I just turned around and I looked at Trey and I was like, "Call 911." What I didn't realize was Trey was already on the phone with 911. Yeah. Um. Well, I didn't know it at that time, 
but I was having a massive heart attack. And uh, so they get there um, within four minutes. The EMT gets there, and Trey's like, while we're waiting on him, in that four minutes, he's trying to keep me occupied. Keep you awake, keep yes. you alert, yes. all of the above. Yeah. Keep, keep me awake, alert. Keep you his know. mind off of what's going on. He's like, know. Take your shoes off. You don't want them to keep your shoes. You know, it's just, you know. <laughs> I mean, they wouldn't have kept his shoes, but I mean, you know, it was. You just I, never know. It was the only thing I could come up with. Right, at the time. yeah. So then he was like, you know, hey, take your belt off. They'll keep your belt. You don't want them to cut your belt off. That's a good belt, you know. And then he's like, <laughs> come, I love it. Come on. That's a, that's a brand new shirt, dude. Take your shirt off. And that, it was his favorite shirt. I knew yeah. it was. I knew it was. It's so. actually a shirt I have on today. So. Yep, yep. But um, you didn't want those buttons popped off. Yeah, didn't want the, didn't want the button up, but, you know, so. It was like, he's keeping me occupied. So by the time that they get there, um, subconsciously, I'd already blacked out. Um, the pain was so severe. Like, they, Trey says that they got there. I started talking about the album and the band and, wow. you know, just every, just talking 90 to nothing. You could tell he was hurting, but you couldn't tell, like, anything was... You couldn't tell he was scared or right. anything, and you know he was. His I body mean, had gone into shock or something, and his mind took over. It was so wild. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. So it's like, you know, the EMTs get there, and I'm like, hey, check out our new album. And, you know, oh, wait a minute. Oh, that hurts. You know? <laughs> so I'm over here screaming bloody murder and, and hollering, check out my album at the same time, you know. So um, I guess you can tell where my mind was. He, yeah, he says right. I never quit working. He never does, ever. He never, he it, never stops. My mind never stops. And uh, But so... They get there in less than four minutes. Well, right at four minutes is what what everybody's told me. They got there within four minutes. So they get me, you know, bagged up and everything, start going to the hospital. I went by the EMTs afterwards, and they said that I talked to them uh, from our house to Highway 202 off the interstate. They said that I was just nonstop, just talking to them, talking to them. They said as soon as they pulled off the interstate, a flatlined. Sure. And um, they had to shock me, I guess shock me back yeah. to existence. <laughs> but um, so it was just, I, I don't remember any of it. I don't remember any of it at all. But so they, they shocked me there. We get over the hill and um, going into Anniston and they shocked me again. Because I've flatlined again. So, needless to say, about the EMTs, I went by and visited them afterwards, and they they actually they printed out my EKG and actually got me to sign it. Oh because, wow! Because it's a training adventure now for them because they said that they have had one survival. There it is. And the the one Ooh. yeah. So, I'm actually number two on the survival for them on cardiac arrest right um so the, the distance is not easy no from from lincoln to, to downtown aniston yeah it's not quick so unless you're trey yeah unless you're, <laughs> unless you're trey you know. yeah yeah, well, was, yeah, was, yeah unless you're driving that thing I drive. Yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna say what he no drives. no we're gonna leave not, that not, not a word not drives. a word <laughs> but you know so we get to the hospital and uh, this is where it gets really, really hard. Uh, subconsciously, I'm unaware of anything. Now, again, Eric is 38 years old. I want to uh, stress this to you again. 38 years old. 5'9", 150 pounds. The, you should not be having heart issues. The, the heart You're not out not, of shape. Yeah, yeah. The heart does not discriminate at all. So my mom is actually already waiting on me at the hospital. My wife is in Birmingham at UAB with her dad. Mm. So she gets the phone call. My wife gets the phone call and looks at her dad and is like, Eric's having a heart attack. We need to go. He just rips his bracelet off <laughs> and is like, we're going. His situation's worth the money right yeah. now. We got to go. Yeah, I'm just here for a test. We're, we're leaving <laughs> right now. But, so, that's, and that's Mike, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. So, so they get on the interstate, and she is just undoubtedly scooting. Right. Her mom is like, this is where the inner demon comes out. <laughs> Her mom is like, you sure you don't want me to drive? And she's just like, no, you're not <laughs> driving. So I asked her, I said, later on, I said, how, how fast exactly were you going? She's like, I, I just looked down at the speedometer once. 
And uh, she was like, I'll just put it this way. I was driving like Trey. Right. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's all she had to say. So I was like, wow. Well, she it's actually kind of enough said kind of thing. Right? right, yeah. She actually Police beat explain. him. Yeah. She actually beat him to the hospital. Oh, wow. I don't know how she did that. She, was she in, I was in Lincoln. Yeah. Like, He's in Lincoln. She's in Birmingham. She said that was the quietest trip <laughs> her dad has ever been on. Like, as soon as she hit the, like, he had been, he had been kind of upset. I mean, any anybody's upset at having to go have tests. I, Absolutely, I'm yeah. to the point now, I hate being, I hate being poked and brought right. on, but it's part of it yeah yeah it's a once a month thing now so but um they, they said she had he had been you know a little antsy that morning and just kind of like oh i don't want to go i don't want to go and just all the way over there all the way back it was like zip nope not a word it's that realization that somebody's got a worse situation than you and it's like i'm not going to complain about the little stuff right now oh, yeah, especially sure. a, a test and things like that all right we're going to pause right here and uh, coming up next we're going to talk about uh when Eric actually gets to the hospital and everything that they do, again, 38 years old, uh, incredible, massive heart attack uh, out of nowhere, very unexpected, and uh, just God's grace and provision and, and what he's done. Uh, there were a lot of things that Eric was told that he wouldn't do again that uh, two weeks later he was doing. So I want you to stay tuned for this. It's uh, really, really powerful stuff. And uh, most importantly, uh, it's about watching what you're doing with your own body as well. So we got more coming up. It's the Morning Overload, Revocation Radio. Revocation Radio, that is uh, propaganda featuring the Great Havens, and it's called High Enough on your Monday edition of the Morning Overload. And hello to you, John Walden, as always, hanging with you until 10 a.m. Grateful and honored for the opportunity. And remember, it's ministry first here at Revocation Radio. If there's ever anything that we can do for you, if uh, you need to get connected, if you got a situation going on in life for you, a friend, or a family member, if you just need prayer, whatever it is, I promise and I guarantee that we will do everything in our power to uh, help you um, throughout all of our listing areas. You know, we're connected with different ministries that um, help people with benevolence and things of that nature. And it's very important to us that it's about more than just radio, okay? Uh, you know, Christian radio for so long, it's like, oh, hey, listen to us. Come do the things we're asking you to do. We want to do stuff for you. We want to help you. We want to be there for you. And if you can't rely on anybody else in your life, to pray for you. And maybe you just accidentally found the station scanning this morning, looking for some new rock, some new hip hop or something. And, and you heard a song or two that you liked. Uh, you know, we want you to know that I promise you because I'm, I'm so forgetful and I got ADHD and I've had it since I was like six years old. Um, I go ahead and just pray right then. So I don't forget. Uh, so if you want to text those in eight, zero five to text us is the number that's eight, zero five, two, eight, three, nine, eight, eight, seven. Love to hear from you today. And I uh, would love the opportunity to uh, pray for you and lift up whatever situation you got going on in your life. And uh, speaking of situations and uh, life passing you by quickly and, and, and being ready, we've got Eric Pearson hanging out. And you've heard uh, the first part of Eric's story and also Trey Carter, uh, his, uh, his compadre, the Dirt Road Liars, if you will. Now, look, liar has a negative connotation to it. Why do we need to listen to the Dirt Road Liars? And where did the name come from? Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you were... Every, everybody in Alabama. Look, so, kind just of put the, us they, on the spot, they, they man. Up. <laughs> so, Look, I'm just no, telling you. <laughs> okay, so most of your uh, hunters and fishermen right. and things of that nature. See, there we go. Where do you end up in Alabama? Everywhere you go. It's a dirt road. It's a dirt, it's a dirt road. road. Yeah, at some point. So, you know, we were sitting there and it was like, okay, everything in Alabama ends up on a dirt road. Right. And then the liar part of it comes because Trey and I are avid hunters and, and yeah, fishermen. fishermen yeah. And we're like, Man, I, I caught a fish was that was this like, big. Yeah, it was like it was 15 huge. pounds and hit the state record. Liar. And, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah. I missed it. Man, you should have seen that buck I missed. Yep, well, where yep. were you at? Well, I was in this shooting house over here, and you should have seen it. It was like an 18 point. It was the biggest <laughs> one I ever saw. It was in bigger than a cow. Yeah. It, was, it was bigger huge. than a cow. Huge. And I don't know why, but my scope was off, man. It just <laughs> fell off my just gun. Just missed it, and it was I'm, I'm not bad. It's just my scope. It was my scope. Yeah, yeah it's what it was. So, or, you know, it didn't exist at all. It, yeah, it's, more of a, <laughs> it, it's more of a comical. I like yeah, it. I like it. it. And it's probably the best band name that we've ever come up with. I mean, yeah, we, before, we've both been in quite a few, and it's and we're not going to mention any of them, obviously, but it's just uh, this one. I feel, like, I feel like it's got a little bit of a catchy. I like it, yeah, though, and it, for, it forces you to tell the story, and it's fun because oh, yeah. you get a little uh, insight into your relationship and and it's just fun. It's a fun oh, yeah. name. I dig oh, it. Yeah. I dig oh, it, man. So uh, the Dirt Road Liars, Life on Pause, by the way, is the uh, album. If you want to check them out, some homegrown Alabama talent doing the thing straight out of Calhoun County, Alabama. 
home. It's home. Calhoun County is home, baby. All right, so uh, back with Eric's story, uh, which did not originate in Calhoun County, but close. Yeah, but the part of Lincoln, County. yeah, in Talladega County. But you ended up in Calhoun County. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so you get to the hospital. You, you've uh, you've coded. Did you code twice? Twice. I, in, I coded in the ambulance. twice on the, in the ambulance. Right, okay. Um, now, Trey actually reminded me in the break, and I didn't think about this. One of the EMTs, now I understand they do all the training and everything. Right, absolutely. They're trained. They know what's up. They, um, but they have to wait on a little certification or a license. <laughs> so one of the EMTs on the uh, ambulance actually got their certification at 12 o'clock that morning. Mm. So, you know, it's a good way to hate. Hey, buddy, welcome to the job. Brian uh, Pan of the fire. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, welcome to the job. Let's give you a cardiac arrest on your first day. or you know, First so, three hours. Oh. But we get to the hospital, and uh, my mom is already waiting on me. Of course, my wife is on the way. Um, but I asked my mom, I was like, where were you? Because I really want to know if she was in the waiting room or mm-hmm. where she was. She said, um, that's where it gets really tough. She said, um, I was at the ambulance door. She said, when they brought you in, they were doing CPR and bagging you, which is the pumping air for right. me. So I flatlined there in front of her. Oh, dude. And, um, That's rough. <laughs> yeah. So they they had to defib me there. And uh, they actually bypassed the ER and went straight to the cath lab. It was just like everybody saw the commotion and what was going on. You had, she said, you had nurses yelling, you know, straight to the cath lab. The doctor that was actually there just happened to be there. He's one of the best cardiologists in the area. And um, he was, actually I found out later, he actually had a little phone call, said you need to come up to the hospital. And uh, he actually did. He came up to the hospital and they took me straight to the cath lab and they started putting the stent in. And um, like I said, I don't remember any of this. This is what I've been told. Um, But I died on the table Hmm. again. Now, granted, all of these were a minute, two minutes apart. Right. But still, you know, everybody's For your heart to completely stop. Yes, yes. That's pretty serious. So they get me on the table, and they do the stent and everything. They have to put me in a medically induced coma because when I came in, it was uh, an ST elevation, a STEMI elevation, um, which is, you know, the heart attack. Um, It was the heart attack. I was seizuring and um, respiratory failure, which, of course, the heart stops, your lung stops, everything stops. Right. Well, come to find out, it was the Widowmaker. Mm. So the, that one. Yeah, it's yeah. the one that you hear that nobody survives. Well, of course, and this is where prayer, prayer comes in. Of course, you know, everybody in my circle was praying at that time. What I didn't realize was there were whole congregations of people praying. Come on, man. And it's, you know, and I'm unaware of any of this. You know, I'm laying, literally, I'm laying on a table dead because they they put an aortic pump in my heart to pump my heart for me and put me in a medically induced coma. Um, Of course, I was in that coma for six days and, you know, Trey asked me one day, he said, what's the first thing you remember when you wake up, when you woke up? And I told him, I was like, man, I said, I remember a nurse practitioner telling me that I was going to get out of the bed that day when I was in ICU. And I was like, when was that? And they were like, that was eight days later. Now, keep in mind, they woke me up on day six Mm -hmm. at the end of that day. So day seven, I have no recollection whatsoever. Just coming back from it all. Yeah, just coming back. to Now, of course, my wife got mad at me because she said as soon as I woke up, the first thing I asked for, she said, you opened your eyes and looked up and said, phone. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was, I was there and that was a uh, very unwelcoming look she gave you. I'm just going to say. They, they, they almost had But to, why did you want your phone? I have no idea. He, <laughs> he was going to call somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, was, check some scores. Yeah, yeah. something. <laughs> I mean, I, actually, they gave me my phone back too soon because I went back later and I was sending like videos to everybody, like, "Hey, I'm in the hospital." 
<laughs> well, we, we were worried about giving him his phone back too early because, I mean, there's a lot of people that were, you know, were, were saying a lot of things like praying for him and whatnot. Yeah. And, and it was a lot of emotional stuff. And I was, I wrote him a letter every day and told him what was going on. And I really did not want him reading that until he was good and coherent. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty emotional time for sure. And it, I mean, that can affect your heart too, you know, getting emotional like okay. that. So I understand. So with, you know, and, and like I told in my, in my testimony, when we did the uh, wrestling show in Aniston, I said, you know, if this doesn't prove that God is the grand physician, I don't know what will. And you ask questions like, you know, well, why did he save me? You know, and I look at it like this. You know, I have people tell me that, it, well, you've got a greater purpose. And I may never know what that purpose is. You know, the purpose may be sitting here today sharing my story. I may not ever know the people that I affect, but I look at it like this, you know, why not? And it's it's like before and after, it's totally different. You know, now I get up every morning, I pray. And I pray throughout the day. You know, I pray for God to open up doors. I pray fervently for, you know, health because we we don't we don't we don't wear shirts that have our expiration date on. That's right. Yeah. And and beforehand, I was I took life for granted. I mean, I I just I took it for granted. It was like you always hear about it, like, oh, so and so had a heart attack, or so and so has cancer, or so and so has this, but you never look at it like. That'll never happen to me. Right. That will never happen to me. And next thing you know, you know, I'm in the back of an ambulance having a massive heart attack. And, but it's just, I still get a little choked up. I mean, today's 73 days later. And, and what, and, you know, you told me off the air, but share with us what they told you you would never do again. So, May 10th was the heart attack. May 12th was our anniversary. May 13th was Mother's Day. Now, doctors don't know that it's our wedding anniversary yeah. or anything like that. So they come in and tell my wife, I'm in the coma. They come in and told her that I was still unstable and that I had a uh, 10% chance to live because it was the Widowmaker and I was still unstable. And they also told her that with the oxygen flow that there was a possibility that I would be brain dead. Mm. So, you know, of course she breaks down and she was like, he's got to have his mind. He has got to have his mind because I'm a little prankster. You're, you're too witty to yeah. not have your mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little really prankster. Crazy. But, um, so anyway, so two weeks, I was in the hospital two, two and a half weeks. Now, granted, I woke up, I had MRSA staff and pneumonia. So I had, a, yeah. So I had a massive heart <laughs> it was attack. Really but bad. They they had to bring my body temperature down, which brought on pneumonia right. and the staff and all that. So now I wake up and I've got, you know, you I got to heal from this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I got to heal from this, and it's a three week treatment, and they have to put a pick line to my heart, and you know, Dude. but I wake up and they they're saying that you know I'll be in there for months two weeks later i'm at the house teaching my not teaching myself but regaining the strength to walk again come on jesus man i mean it's it's powerful dude it, you just don't know no you just don't know uh, and they you know to be potentially brain dead and then walk and i mean what was going through your head i mean did you have did you hear any of that stuff that were they telling you that when you woke up like hey we don't think you're going to be able to to do anything or i mean did they kind of give you a, no, a layout was, of what it might be like for you it, i was so incoherent that um it was all relayed you know they would they would tell my wife and they would tell well they would tell my wife my wife would tell trey and then they would you know they would tell me and you know i one of the things that made it click was when the nurse practitioner come in that day in ICU and she was like, she just like, you're getting out of bed today. And I tried right then. And a lot of that was the motivation. Yeah. But 
at the end of the day, you can have all the motivation in the world, but without God and His healing power, you're you're not going to be. You know, it was to the point to where you know I wasn't going to be able to do any other activities, or you know, it was just a grim outlook. And then they they told me they were like, your heart healed in ten days. Fully functioning, back to normal. Fully functional, no permanent heart damage. Dude, that's wow. the insane part. I, I and that, that's the part we were really worried about. I mean, to see where he was, yeah, seventy three days ago, dude. To see him where he is right now, I mean. So there's nothing artificial. The only you thing have stint, that, I right? have a stent. Yeah, that's it, dude. That is amazing. It's incredible. That is amazing. Well, obviously, and and like you've said, you know, when you had that opportunity to uh, to do the wrestling event, yeah. pur- purpose you didn't realize you had. Uh, well, even more so. And that day, uh, that evening, uh, 10 people actually came to know the Lord. Come on, man. And, and it's not anything about my testimony. It's the vessel. You know, if my testimony can be the vessel to somebody giving their life to the Lord, I will beg and plead with anybody to give their life to the Lord because we don't know when our next breath is. Right. You know, we like I said, we don't have expiration dates on our shirts you know, we don't have expiration dates. Well, I'm going to die tomorrow. Yeah. We don't have that on us. And so, like me, for example, yeah, I was backsliding. And, you know, I was backsliding good. <laughs> you know, if it, just go full force. It, it wasn't a little bit. It no. was, I, yeah, and, we're full bore with it. Yeah. You know, and, and that day could have very well been my last. Yeah. And, you know, and I'll give you an example. When I walk into to do a stress test or something like that. Now, I walk into a doctor's office. My chart looks like an encyclopedia. I bet. And I and that actually, was just two and a half weeks worth of information. Yes. <laughs> and I actually had a nurse. She opened up my chart, and she just got, she got pale. And she just turned around and looked at me, and she was like, you should not be here. Mm-hmm. That, we've heard that a lot over the past, over the past 73 days. I can it's, imagine is uh you know when we were in the hospital and I, we were standing over him and we were looking at him i mean he shouldn't be here you know and there's only one there's only one thing that kept him here and that's god giving him giving him a second chance and you know i think i think it's pretty pretty awesome so now when we're on stage we can just be like eric the second chance <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Second Chance. That's your, that's your new stage name right there. <laughs> and again, you know, and Eric will tell you straight up, uh, it, it all comes back to your diet and taking care of yourself and, and, and taking that uh, a lot more seriously. Uh, even at the age of 38, you can have a massive heart attack and uh, could be the widow maker. I mean, this is it's pretty serious stuff and uh, you can't take it for granted at all. We'll do uh, one more segment coming up, a, a wrap-up segment. Anything else that uh, you guys want to throw out there and stuff, we'll uh, do that coming up next. More to come. It's the Morning Overload, Revocation Radio. Revocation Radio, Derek Miner. It's called This Morning. This Morning, I wonder why I have the coworkers that I do. Uh, anyway, John Walton here. <laughs> it is the morning overload. I know what? That, this is so true. But, yeah. I, I love him. He, you know, you guys, brother. He is. He is my brother. He does all the things that I don't want to do, nor do I know how to do. And I definitely don't like to do it. So those are the ones you have to. He's have that guy. Sure. Yeah. Hey, I tell you. I mean, like he came in our first year. Uh, back in 2011, our first year of Revocation Radio, he came in as an intern, 21-year-old intern, and uh, now he's the business manager. He handles all the, the technical stuff and the bills, and mm, I do the radio and the people thing. And he does all the sales stuff and the things in the background, and, and so I love him, and uh, I don't want him to leave. So, so uh, Look up and say, thank you, Jesus, for sending him into my life. <laughs> amen to that, because, man, I was trying to learn how to do that stuff when we first started from... The head of our board is in this office beside us, and, and his sister used to be the secretary or the office manager for him, and she retired, and she was doing the radio station stuff too, and she was starting to hand some of it over to me like, here's how we do the bills, and here's and I'm going, mm-mm. She's like, no, <laughs> no. I don't like this at all. <laughs> radio, <laughs> yes. Bills, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. like, I came over as a radio guy to run a radio station, to, like to run the radio part. There's more? Why don't you got to do that other stuff? There's that- bills. What? Power. It's kind of press buttons. It's kind of like when I check the mail now and I have another medical bill. It's oh. like, be gone with you, Satan. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> hey, you just claim that in the name of Jesus, and maybe, maybe it'll be gone. Thank God know. for insurance. Is all I'm going to say. Like it was. <laughs> I've seen some of those bills. Ooh. Ooh. No. 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 Well, you died four times. 
Uh, so yeah. Oh man, that's just crazy. And again, if you've been missing the story, it is um, it is such a cool story of God's provision and God's plan. And you never know. Wow. Hey, volume button. Do that. <laughs> that was distracting. Uh, that that may have been heard on the microphone. I don't know. Uh, anyway, we got Eric Pearson and Trey Carter. Uh, also, uh, aside from who they are, you know, by their names individually together, they're the Dirt Road Liars. And uh, life on pause. Uh, thank God it didn't, the pause wasn't no more than like a 60 seconds, right? I was Trey's, definitely blamed for that. Uh, he told me no I longer allowed to, to come up with an album name. Yeah, I, I can't do it. That's just. Uh, I mean, literally, the day that you guys were waiting for your CDs to come in is the day that the heart attack was. It was, it was five minutes before he left. And mm-hmm. when he came back, he was uh, having a heart attack. And it was just like, and the, the, the digital album dropped the night before <clears throat> on iTunes and Spotify and all that stuff. And we were so excited. And then you went from being on top of the world to the world being on top of us and, you know, in, in, a, in a good less than 24 hours. You guys hours, were hanging you know? out, celebrating, having a day for the new album, and then boom. Actually, we were rehearsing for the show ah. Saturday. Oh, yeah. I'm a, uh, he says that I'm a driver. And it's just like, hey, you know, we want to be good. Yeah, we're not, oh, yeah. we're not, we're not taking a break just because we got CD. We're we're practicing, right? Well, you know, Amen. we do a lot of benefit shows, and we, we want to be we want to be the the best we can possibly be for those guys. I mean, you know, it's kind of our servant's heart. We, you know, we try we to did do um, we did helping and homing vets last week. Oh, that's awesome. So um, what it is helping and homing Inc. Uh, out of Aniston, and they actually help homeless veterans or veterans that have been um, misplaced from society yeah uh, basically like last night i'm glad first... you told me about that because that's something that's been on my heart my dad and i've been actually talking i want to know more about that okay yeah. well like last night they they did a post and said hey we need a mini fridge uh such and such has they're living in a camper their refrigerator went out his wife is pregnant you know so just think of that aspect of you know you're living in a you're you're a veteran First of all, you're living in a camper where you're pregnant. And we don't think of that. We, we right. all see on the outside looking in, oh, everything's fine. Everything's okay. And that's the way I was. You know, everything's fine. Everything's okay. Everything's great. We don't see the little things. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, since my heart attack, the little things that used to upset me don't upset me anymore. It's like, you know, is it worth some things are now is is it worth getting upset about the answer is usually no and it's not yeah yeah and you know it, it's oh, excuse me let the little things go but with the helping and homing you know it's just things of that I, I don't know i don't know how much money we raised last weekend or anything like that and it's not about that it's just it's about like that's why we did relay for life you know, Trey's grandmother had cancer. Everybody has someone affected mm-hmm. by cancer. Absolutely. So we, we did the Relay for Life event. And, you know, yes, it is money out of our pocket. It comes back around, man. But God bless God, that. God yeah. provides that money for us to do those. And I mean, because every, every time we, we do a show, we have to rent a U-Haul. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, right now we do. <laughs> and, you know, we, 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 we've, we've talked about this a lot. You know, a lot of bands, just they just refuse to do that stuff. And, and you know, we, we feel like, you know, neither one of us have, like, a lot of money laying around to just, to just throw at, a, uh, yeah. at a lot of stuff, you know. But we have time. And, you know, I think that, that biblically a servant's heart is, is something that's very valuable. You know, I mean, I think that that goes a long way into, you know, whether you go out and talk to somebody about God, you can, you can show who God is through through Absolutely. servantry, you know. Yes. What I mean, you can you can go out and 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 do those type of things and 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 be that type of person without, you know, without having to spend a bunch of money, you know. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things out there, a lot of really good causes that he and I feel really really passionately about. Uh, man, in the kingdom, time is the greatest thing you can spend, you know, and, and and that makes a huge difference for people, and they appreciate that so much, and. As, uh, as we wrap it up this morning, uh, an incredible story. And, Eric, I know that you're going to have uh, so many more opportunities. And I know that uh, as the Dirt Road Liars are, are you know, playing their shows and stuff, uh, it'll be a cool thing for you to kind of share your story in between songs. And, and you guys got a lot of opportunity, a lot of cool things coming, especially, you know, being the fact that um, you have connections to go into the venues that may not be church venues. You know, and that's what I love uh, with, with the bands that we play. You know, so many Christian bands that are not afraid to go play in bars yeah. and they're not afraid to go on these secular tours with these other artists because they're like 
that's where we're supposed to be. That's where the harvest is. And so I'm excited for you guys and, and everything coming and, and Eric for you to share your story. And again, I mean, 38 years old, the widow maker, you know, I mean that you, you don't hear it. You don't hear it a lot and you definitely don't hear a positive outcome from it as well. Right. Very rare. And, uh, and like you had said, those EMTs told you that they had had one survivor from that. They had ever seen one survivor. Yeah. And the, um, the hospital, um, actually the success rate of 15 minutes or more Mm -hmm. out is zero wow he was numero uno wow i was start to finish 32 minutes oh my goodness so that's from calling 911 going to the hospital going through the cath lab and into icu wow 32 minutes well that is impressive also, by the way, yes. from Lincoln and, and through all of that. Wow. Number one. So kudos to them. But man, kudos to God for um It must have been a Hemi. Something. It had to have been a Hemi. That's what it was. <laughs> absolutely. How'd you know? How'd you know? I don't know. Uh, but man, this is uh, this is absolutely incredible. And Eric, I'm excited for you to have uh, have this opportunity. And I, I think the wrestling shows are, are where it's at, too. I think that's a, a huge huge field for you guys and i hope that yeah, you can and, stay plugged and in with that that's another one that's a christian yeah. venue that that we play at yeah and you know and and if we have the opportunity to go there i mean just like sharing my story at the wrestling event um like i said 10 people got saved that night and i was just a vessel you know planet I, sh- I shared the story on my facebook page because of that night yeah and within five days of sharing the testimony online, it got 8,800 views. Wow. Now, and and it's not one of those things to where like, oh, I want it to go viral for popularity. No, I want it to go viral to plant the seed. Amen. That God is the grand physician. And like I told you off air, you know, Les Brown says, if you want to live like no one else, then live like no one else. And we need to use that in our everyday life as Christians. If you want to live like no one else, then live like no one else. Be like no one else. You have a story to tell. Your story. Don't worry about anybody else and what they're doing. Yep. Do it the way God's exactly. called you to do it. And man, we get so caught up. You know, look at this world. Look at the Kardashians. You know, everybody wants to do the crap that they're doing. Hey, everybody, we're going to start a GoFundMe for $100 million for this 18-year-old or however old she is so she to can be, be a billionaire. billionaire. Yeah. It's like, why are you so concerned like, about her? Like, I mean, I, I, that, that's something that I will say for me this has affected me is is I figured out that all these things that we acquire, yeah, they're really just things. Yeah. But people, people like Eric right here, this is my brother. I mean, it was probably one of the most difficult things I've ever had to watch. and uh, It's impacted you. It brought I it tell. in perspective. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. did. Amen. And you know, after after the event, you know, of course, it took Trey and I a while to get back to the writing <clears throat> side of things. You know, we write and compose everything that we do. And we do some covers. But anyway, so we, we sat down. It was 11 o'clock at night. I texted Trey. I said, what are you doing? Because I had something in my mind. I would actually just watched I Can Only Imagine. Oh, wow, yeah. Which is a wonderful movie. If anybody and out there hasn't watched it, please He and I... It relate to that and i think any musician does absolutely relate yeah. to that movie but there's things and nuances. people that don't believe in you yeah. yeah there's things and nuances in that movie that we relate with on a personal level oh yeah well i just had all these things going through my head from the event from what i had been told and i texted him i was like what are you doing he's like nothing i was like Come over now. We need to write. Mind you, this is 11 o'clock at night. Yes. <laughs> so he's in... Life um, of an artist. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. in he's in Coldwater. I'm in Lincoln. Yeah. He's there by 11-11. There you go. So I just... By, <laughs> this it was is, enough this time, is crack on Trey's driving day, by yeah, the way. It was enough time for <laughs> me to walk. That sounds accurate to me. I grew up in Coldwater. Oh, yeah. That sounds accurate. Yeah, <laughs> it was, that's what it I'm was enough about. time for me to walk into the living room and tell my wife that Trey was on his way that we were writing and she just looks up God love her I mean she just looks up she's like okay she knew Mm -hmm. that I had something to say and I sat down with Trey and I was like look I have all these thoughts running through my mind from the event and I told him I was like before the heart attack I was just surviving I said now I have to take medicine to survive and it was those things that we just put into it and that's how we come up with awake again and it was just like Will we awake again is the main 
purpose of that song and take it to the other side of things. You know, when we wake again, we'll be in a grander place than here. Amen. You know, we won't have to worry about massive heart attacks. We won't have to worry about cancer. We won't have to worry about the ills of the world because we'll be awake in the best place ever. Amen. Amen. Man, it's awesome. I appreciate you coming in and sharing the story. And, and I just know some uh, some awesome doors are going to open. And uh, you guys keep it up, man. Uh, final words and thoughts? We just appreciate the, the opportunity to come in here, man. It's great seeing you again. It's, I know. It's been, it's been a long time Very since Wilburn High School. Right? I know, so. dude. 18 years. Oh, uh, what the crap. <laughs> I, I think this I know, is like the second time I've met you. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. but I'm, I'm an outcast because I'm from the other side of Aniston. Oxford. Yeah, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aniston. I'm the oh. I'm Sax. Oh, you're Sax. Sax. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, For some reason, I thought you went to Oxford. I didn't know why. No, yeah. I didn't go to Oxford. Okay. But I'm, I'm from the <laughs> other side. Of, you <laughs> he just know. said no. No, 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 no. <laughs> not that. Man, we want you to check them out, the Dirt Road Liars, and uh, they got a purpose. And if you're looking for uh, for some fun entertainment and uh, an awesome story behind it, be sure to check them out. What's the website? www.thedirtroadliars.com or facebook.com backslash the dirt road liars. Boom. Yep. That's like it. That. Awesome. Guys, great well job. Done, Eric. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's got it. You guys come hang out again and uh, let's do some live music one day for sure. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Check him out and uh, continue to share Eric's story, Eric Pearson, uh, when you find it through the Dirt Road Liars. Uh, be sure to tell somebody about it.